I think kindness is a great business strategy, and I think we've leveraged kindness and caring in a very positive way. In 1982, a time when there were full-service salons, barber shops, and not much in between, David Rubenzer and Steve Lemon started Great Clips with a differentiating strategy, a walk-in value price salon. They opened several successful locations. A year later, Ray Barton joined them and brought in the idea of franchising. He also recruited his sister, Rhoda Olson, to bring some structure to the rapidly growing organization. My brother Ray had an incredibly clear vision that was pretty easy to adopt, but it was always about the customer. It was about healthy growth. It was about building a brand that could be a legacy. Great Clips was a regional chain of 180 salons when Rhoda joined full-time in 1987. She rose through the ranks of HR and training, and the year she became CEO in 2011, Great Clips surpassed $1 billion in annual system revenue. Through the years, Rhoda developed a reputation for being a data-driven leader who also connects with employees and customers on a personal level. If you think about our business, you know, we're in a people business. It's, it's customer interaction, it's stylist interaction with the customer, it's franchisee interaction with the stylist. And, and so you go, well, how can you measure that? Well, you can. And then if you have a great relationship with the franchisee and their business isn't going well, instead of sitting down with them and saying, you know, your business kind of sucks right now, you can say, your new customers aren't coming back, your new return number is not right, your peak hours are not covered adequately, um, you aren't getting repeat customers to return often enough. So if you have a good relationship that's built on a commitment, a shared commitment of caring, um, then data can actually help that. Rhoda has also leveraged technology as a tool to enhance customer service. 40% of our customers check in online. I know when we started looking at that, people asked me what I thought success would be, and I said 10%. 40% um, of our customers check in online, and we just went over 10 million app downloads. And so putting that salon door in the customer's hands was incredibly important. It keeps them connected to us. They're more loyal. Um, it's a way for us to communicate. It's been game-changing. Today, Great Clips has more than 4,400 salons nationwide and serves more than 100 million customers. But thanks in large part to Rhoda, it still feels like a small company. Her personal leadership style is an inspiration to other female executives. We don't have to be embarrassed about being emotional. Um, you know, we have to leverage that in a way that um, we can build the strength in the organization. People want to be cared for. They want to be part of a community. They want people to be kind to them. They want to know that they matter, and that's the strength that women bring to business. Rhoda doesn't shy away from sharing her own story either. So I think one of the biggest issues for women when they're trying to balance all of that is realize no one has a perfect life. It may not be the perfect life, but it is a full one. In 2018, Rhoda transitioned to vice chair of the board, but she's still in the office almost every day, working with Great Clips leadership and visiting franchisees. She volunteers with a micro-loan organization that supports women in Africa, and she's very close with her family. You know, the other thing that I think is unique about Great Clips is we are a family business. And so me and my brother are in the business, and then I have three sisters that are franchisees, including my twin sister, Rhonda. So, and then my son, Ryan, just became a franchisee. So there is a benefit of that family business and the support that we provide one another. So, so it's been kind of fun to have that family business angle as well. And it's a lively business at that. Some people will talk about the hair business being full of drama. And I'll go, yeah, you could say there's drama. I call that emotion and passion. And I would much prefer to have emotion and passion in a business than deal with a bunch of boring engineers. And I can say that because my father was an engineer.